The truth is when soil loses its life, most gardeners rush to buy fertilizer. But what if the answer doesn't come in a bag or bottle, but in a living plant that farmers have been using for thousands of years? Long before chemical fertilizers existed, ancient farmers found a way to restore tired, barren ground and bring it back to full fertility. They relied on cover crops, but one particular plant has stood the test of time. It is hardy, fast-growing, and still outperforms modern fertilizers when it comes to rebuilding dead soil. This is not just an old idea, it is a method still proving itself in today's regenerative gardens. And when you understand how it works, you'll see why no synthetic fertilizer can compete with it. By the end of this guide, you'll know exactly how to grow and use this ancient cover crop to transform poor, lifeless soil into a thriving foundation for your garden. At first glance, fertilizers seem like the fastest fix. They supply nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which plants need to grow. But the problem is that they do nothing to repair the soil itself. In fact, chemical fertilizers often accelerate soil degradation because they feed plants directly while starving the microbial life that keeps soil alive. Over time, this leads to compacted, lifeless ground where roots struggle to spread, and even more fertilizer is needed just to maintain yields. What makes this worse is that fertilizers wash away easily, polluting water and wasting money. A gardener may see a temporary burst of green, but the soil beneath continues to decline. Dead soil cannot hold water, cannot hold nutrients, and cannot sustain earthworms or fungi that are the real builders of fertility. To fix dead soil, you need something that rebuilds its structure and life from the ground up. That is exactly what cover crops were designed by nature to do. Among all the cover crops used through history, one stands out for its unmatched ability to restore fertility clover. Ancient farmers in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East used different varieties of clover, and over time it became the backbone of soil renewal systems long before synthetic fertilizers existed. Clover is a legume, which means it has the unique ability to pull nitrogen out of the air and fix it directly into the soil through nodules on its roots. This makes it a living fertilizer factory. But clover does much more than supply nitrogen. Its roots penetrate deep into compacted ground, breaking it open and allowing water and air to reach places that were once suffocated. The dense root system also feeds soil microbes with constant exudates, fueling the underground food web. As the clover dies back or is cut and turned into mulch, it creates a steady layer of organic matter that improves soil structure, increases water retention, and feeds future crops. What makes clover remarkable is how fast it works. Within just a season or two, soil that was powder dry, hard or depleted can bounce back to support lush vegetable beds. Worms quickly return because of the root activity and leaf mulch. Unlike chemical fertilizers which burn out quickly, clover creates fertility that lasts and keeps building with every cycle. The secret to clover's effectiveness lies in its partnerships. When clover roots grow, they host bacteria called rhizobia inside small nodules. These bacteria capture nitrogen gas from the atmosphere and transform it into ammonium, which is a plant-available form of nitrogen. Instead of depleting the soil, clover enriches it. This nitrogen remains in the soil long after the clover has been mowed down, feeding the crops that follow. At the same time, Clover's thick canopy protects bare soil from erosion and extreme heat. Its leaves act as a living mulch, shading the ground, locking in moisture and keeping temperatures more stable. When the clover is eventually cut back or left to winter kill, it leaves behind a mat of organic matter. This decomposes into humus, binding loose sand or loosening hard clay, depending on what the soil needs. The combination of nitrogen fixation, organic matter addition, and soil protection makes clover uniquely powerful. Where fertilizer feeds only the plant, clover feeds the soil itself, creating a fertile cycle that compounds over time. To use clover effectively in a home garden, timing and placement matter. Clover grows best when planted either in early spring or late summer depending on your climate. The seed is tiny, so it should be broadcast over loosened soil and lightly raked in. Once established, clover grows quickly and spreads into a dense cover. 
In a vegetable garden, clover can be planted as an off-season cover crop, then cut down and tilled lightly into the soil before planting vegetables. It can also be used as a living mulch between rows of crops, where it suppresses weeds while feeding the soil. For orchards and perennial beds, clover works as a permanent ground cover, continuously supplying fertility and protecting the soil around fruit trees or shrubs. The key is to let clover build for several weeks or months before cutting it back. The longer it grows, the more nitrogen it fixes and the deeper its roots penetrate. Cutting it down before it goes to seed ensures it doesn't spread beyond where you want it, while still giving maximum benefit to the soil. So, the biggest difference between clover and fertilizer really comes down to sustainability. Fertilizers, you know, offer a quick fix but they leave soil weaker in the long run. On the other hand, clover invests in soil health and that benefit just keeps on compounding over time. Fertilizer simply can't build organic matter, it can't improve water retention, and it can't restore the microbial life that makes soil truly fertile. But clover, well, it does all of these things at once. Clover is also, honestly, really cost-effective. A packet of clover seed can restore entire garden beds for just a fraction of the price of chemical fertilizers, and, get this, it requires no repeated applications. It's self-sustaining, renewing itself with every growth cycle. Even in poor soil, clover thrives, because it doesn't rely on what's already in the ground, it actually creates its own fertility. Maybe the most important benefit is resilience. Gardens built on fertilizer dependency, well, they tend to collapse when supply runs out or costs rise, but gardens built on clover and other cover crops, they just keep thriving year after year. That's exactly why, for centuries, farmers have trusted clover as their main soil builder. If your soil feels dry, compacted, or exhausted, clover can change everything. Planting this ancient cover crop is like inviting life back into the soil. Within weeks, you'll see new green shoots covering what was once barren ground. Within months, you'll notice earthworms tunneling again, soil that stays moist after rain, and crops that grow stronger without heavy inputs. The beauty of clover is that it doesn't just restore nutrients, it restores balance. It builds a living foundation where plants, microbes, and soil all support each other. This is the secret that allowed ancient farmers to maintain fertility for generations, and it is still the secret that modern gardeners can rely on today. Clover is proof that the old ways often still beat the new. It remains one of the simplest, cheapest, and most effective tools to revive dead soil. While fertilizers give a temporary burst, clover builds lasting fertility that deepens with time. It is a plant that works with nature instead of against it, and every gardener should consider it as part of their soil restoration toolbox. If you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more in-depth gardening methods that actually work. Share this with fellow gardeners who may be struggling with dead soil, and help spread the knowledge that real fertility begins with life in the soil, not chemicals in a bag.